Okay, let's go ahead and get it started. Thank you, thank you for joining today on this uh, webinar session for Blackboard Ally. Good day, everyone, and welcome to this first Ally Robot webinar session for 2022. Thank you for taking this time to join us for a great presentation of the new features of Blackboard Ally and how it helps institutions to create accessible and inclusive uh, environments for all the students. Before we get started, um, I wanted to go through some housekeeping notes. First of all, participants are muted by default as a courtesy to the speakers. We want to make sure that we avoid some accidental uh, background noise also, if you want to turn off uh, the sound of each pop-up notifications uh, as people enter the session, please open the Collaborate panel on the bottom right corner of your screen, click on the gear icon, select the notification settings, and then check the box for audio notification. Also, we are offering closed captioning today. Uh, so for this, uh, please open the collaborative panel on the bottom right corner of your screen and then click on the gear icon, select the audio and video settings and check the box for display closed captions. Uh, additionally, we want to make uh, this session as interactive as possible. So please feel free to post questions on the chat during the session and one of our Blackboard team members will do their best to answer. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted in the community site and sent it out to you by email after this session. By way of introduction, my name is Rosario Bruzon, Product Marketing Manager for Blackboard Ally. And joining me today in this session, I would like to present our main speaker today, Dan Lowry, Senior Director of Product Management for Blackboard Ally, who is going to give us uh, great updates on our product roadmap. And also, uh, I have a few, few of my colleagues uh, who will be assisting with moderating this session for the next hour. Well, this is our agenda for today. We'll spend some time covering the product vision of Ally. Dan is going to give us more details about how our roadmaps work uh, here at Blackboard. And then we'll cover recently released capabilities for Ally. Also take a look at what's coming next and then look at some of the work in progress and highlights uh, a bit farther on the horizon. So, uh, and then assuming that we have time, we'll take some Q and A's. And finally, some great news and announcements we have for you today. Last bit of business, some of the items we cover today are subject to change. Uh, the way they look, the time in which they are released. So just be aware of that. And as always, uh, we try our best to inform you when those changes occur. Okay, we're going to have a great session today. So let's start talking about Blackboard Ally and how we work to make content more accessible. Uh, now I will go ahead and mute my mic and, to, and I will turn over to you then and continue with the presentation today. Dan? Hey, thank you so much, Rose, and good day, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces today, so very nice to see everyone. Some fresh faces also, so a very warm welcome, especially if this is your first Blackboard Ally Roadmap. So let us jump in. We're going to start with a little bit about the vision behind Ally. And you know, 
when we think about the vision behind Ally, it's really rooted in five foundational pillars. And these are the pillars that ground our product strategy. Think of these as, you know, our guiding principles. They're the things that inform, you know, what we build and likely what we're not going to build. And at the very center, it's all founded around universal design, right? With Ally, we really aim to be a core part of the accessibility ecosystem at your institution to promote universal design and really make content more inclusive for every single student. The second piece is scalability. So being able to take sometimes very complex tasks and problems and address them through allies tools, whether they're reporting tools, automation, some of the guidance that we provide, um, and ultimately leveraging the power of the cloud that Ally is built on. And then the third is focused around engagement. With Ally, we use a human-centered design philosophy to, you know, kind of reduce the barrier to entry, so to speak, into using a tool um, like Ally. Um, sometimes, you know, accessibility can be daunting, especially if you're a course content creator that is less familiar with accessibility and some of the needs of students. Um, so throughout Ally, what it does is really encourage interaction, provide guidance throughout the tool to make it a little bit more comfortable and easy to use as course content creators, you know, craft content, for example, um, which then leads to improved student retention, improved student success, right, the outcomes that everyone is looking for. And finally, a focus on community, right? This helps drive our roadmap priorities, gather feedback, and ultimately improve Ally in a way that is demonstrable to your institutions, to your users, your students, your instructors. And part of determining the roadmap um, is really around, well, how do you actually prioritize what you build, right? When I think of a roadmap, this is something that's kind of this living, breathing, complex thing, um, and it constantly evolves, you know, and it can be kind of broken down into two parts. You know, at the first or at the beginning, uh, it's really around gathering information. So there are lots of different sources of input that feed into a roadmap. So you might have user experience activities that our design team conducts, things like generative research, uh, validating concepts. We do this often with our user group or even doing usability testing. Um, some of this is also, you know, beta testing. Uh, with our recent instructor feedback for WYSIWYG, we did a beta testing session before we even made it available to everyone. So those are the types of things that help play into our roadmap. And then the second part is kind of distilling all of those inputs into things like problem statements and then use cases. These are the things our team uses to actually build functionality that you see inside of Ally. And this is how we assess and kind of measure and understand, you know, what kind of positive impact they can make to an individual, to an institution. So all of these get reviewed and they make sure we have to make sure that they align to our product roadmap pillars that I just covered. So those are the inputs and the impacts that are then used to prioritize the work and ultimately create the roadmap that we're going to be covering today. This is true for Ally, but it's also true for any of the solutions that we have at Blackboard. The next piece that is also critical to mention is timelines, right? This is important because we want to set a realistic expectation about what we're building and when it will be available to help your institutions uh, plan appropriately. So for each one of the features that we cover today, they're going to be bucketed into a few distinct time horizons. We'll have some coverage over recently released items, and then we'll go into things that are more future facing. Right. So in one to three months, that generally means we have a good level of confidence of when a new feature will become available. Right. These are an active development, sometimes an active review or sometimes in beta in the case of instructor feedback uh, for WYSIWYG content. Um, three to six months, we have a pretty good general idea. You know, we might have scope defined, um, might have started some active development, but, you know, we might not have a, a good sense of the release date. And then the six months plus, this is longer term roadmap, which you might see here might be a little bit more thematic in nature, you know, higher level kind of thoughts on features and functions, still maybe a little bit in that concept validation phase. So today, this is the structure that we're going to use for our roadmap presentation. All right, so 
let's get going. First, we're going to cover some of the recently released features of Ally. So all of these are going to be available now. And we'll first start with, I think we have two that are maybe a little bit more technical in nature about how Ally integrates into your LMS. I was right. Um, so the first is all about LTI. And if you're not familiar with LTI, this is the IMS standard that Ally and maybe some of the other tools that you use in your LMS or VLE. Um, this is how we integrate our software into your system. And so here, <clears throat> We've expanded support uh, for Ally to now include support for LTI 1.3. So this is in addition to the current LTI 1.1 that Ally supports. We're supporting both at the same time. So what does this actually mean for your institution? Well, to your end users, it doesn't really materially impact the functionality of Ally. So the tools, the reports, instructor feedback, alternative formats, those all continue to work the same, right? It's the same feature function. It's more about the way those are actually integrated into your systems. Uh, for many institutions, the big driver here is just keeping up to date with the latest and greatest standards. Um, the IMS has announced that they are retiring what they call legacy LTI uh, versions, which is, includes 1.1. Um, and I believe the timeline for that uh, depreciation is June 2022, so this year. Um, and, you know, while we encourage all institutions to consider upgrading, you know, we're going to fully continue to support, you know, our current LTI integration and LTI 1.3. So it gives your institutions, you know, the runway that you need uh, to make those changes in between terms, for example, uh, when it makes the most sense to you. And thank you, Rose, for putting some of the details down there. Check out our help site where we have information about LTI 1.3 and how it can integrate into each one of your learning management systems. All right, next, if your institution uses Canvas, if that is your LMS or VLE of choice, uh, we've introduced support for Canvas developer keys. Um, and this is just a little bit of a different integration method that Ally now supports for Canvas that makes setup a little bit easier if you're a new client. Um, if you're an existing client, what this does, well, also does for new clients, gives you a little bit more flexibility, granular control um, um, related to the API permissions that you provide to Ally or any other tool that you use. Um, so what that means is it, it has very specific um, permissions around what data can be accessed, what can be modified, added, or deleted by Ally. So if your institution uses Canvas and you're interested in using developer keys, check out the link that Rose put in chat there. We walk you through and give you a breakdown of everything there. All right, let's talk about some new features too. Um, and over the past few months, we've added quite a bit of new language support for both um, the translated and alternative audio formats. So some of the new translated languages that are now available for Ally include Irish, Marathi, Portuguese from Portugal, and also Punjabi. Uh, and for audio alternative formats, actually later this week, we're going to be expanding to support English variants. So New Zealand English, South Africa, Wales, and also Hindi. So this is available for Ally for LMS, web, and WCM. And also check out our help site if you want to see a more complete listing of all the different audio formats. All right, we've also expanded guidance for documents. So now when you have a Word document, a PowerPoint, or a PDF document, Ally will not only flag when there is a language that has not been set, but also if it might be incorrect. Um, so it'll provide you guidance to understand what that actually means or um, and how to actually fix the issues with step-by-step -step, uh, instructions. And when you've made those adjustments, you can upload them back if you're using the LMS uh, by dragging and dropping those files like you can see on the screenshot on the screen. Next up, we've made some updates to the institutional reporting. Um, so it's been quite a few years since Ally has was first released. 
uh, with institutional reporting. And as a part of that, you know, allies matured and grown and some of your data sets have uh, grown as well, right? The use cases around how reporting flows and the data, um, you know, those have changed too. So what we've done here is that we've updated the institutional reporting graph with some refreshed visuals. Uh, in particular, if your institution has a lot of months or terms, uh, a lot of data um, that your courses represent, you'll see some improved readability that make it a little bit easier to distinguish between the WYSIWYG, file, and overall accessibility scores. You can now toggle them on and off. So if you want to focus on a particular type of content, you can do that. And we've also made some minor workflow tweaks um, and performance improvements. So when you're exporting CSV reports, your institution, if you have a large data set, those work a little bit better now. The workflows changed, been tweaked. So that is available now. <clears throat> and next is instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. This is you know, one of the biggest changes to come to Ally uh, over the past year. And what this does, it takes the same ally that everyone knows and really improves on it. It turns the way ally functions from, um, you know, a solution that assesses content accessibility after the fact, after you create content, into something that proactively aids you during the content creation process. So here we've extended ally scoring and guidance to WYSIWYG tools. This might be the rich content editor or rich text editor, anywhere where you can kind of create content inside of the learning management system. Um, so if you have a piece of HTML content, for example, or a discussion board, if you use Blackboard Learn, this might be an item. This will be a page in Canvas. So Ally will not only score it, but it also provide you guidance directly in the tool. So you still have your rich text editor, but on the top and the bottom, you get guidance from Ally. The thing that's really cool and new here is that similar to what we do for documents, you'll get that guidance, but you now have live scoring. So as a content creator, let's say uh, an instructional designer adds content, you'll see a live score and it'll move up and down and indicate to you where there are issues. So similar to that reg squiggly line that you see with Microsoft Word, you'll see very similar style here and approach that we've taken for WYSIWYG content. We've also added quick fix suggestions and batch remediation. So we'll suggest to you potential quick fixes that within a couple of selections, we'll update the content, update all occurrences of the content. So if you're using, let's say, a particular style of text and background color that clash, maybe they have, maybe there's a contrast problem. What Ally does is that it intelligently scans all of the content and makes note of how many occurrences there are of that specific contrast issue. And then it'll suggest a palette of suggested colors. That's a lot of suggestions um, that meet the minimum contrast guidelines. Um, and then you can select to batch fix, batch fix those all at once, just within a few selections. So this is available now for Blackboard original courses, Canvas, D2L, and Moodle. Uh, we have some improvements coming that I'll talk about in just a bit, including support for Ultra coming very soon. So what do we have next? I think we're doing a demo. So we're going to demo a few things. Uh, first, we'll do an in-depth look at instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content. And then we'll go into how you actually enable it. By default, this is off. And then we'll also cover some of the reporting improvements that I talked about inside of the institution report. All right, let me share my screen. I'll just take a moment. All right, and if someone could just confirm that the screen share is working, we can get on with the demo. It is working, Dan. All right, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> so for today, let's start with instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you how this works in a Learn original course, uh, but this will also be available for Ultra courses very soon, uh, and it's already available for other LMS integrations. So first, I'm already inside of a course. I am going to select course content. You'll see the page refresh. I was already in course content. Um, and from here, you'll notice that I have one particular item labeled intro to cells. And if I scroll down a little bit, 
um, I can see that there is, looks like there's an image of the diagram of a cell. If I scroll down a little bit, I'll also note that some contrast problems, maybe, I'm not quite sure. Um, there's some interesting spacing down here. Um, there's a table, which might be a header, not quite sure. And then maybe some interesting heading stuff going on. Um, but at this point, I really don't have a good sense of, you know, how accessible is this document right now? Um, so I'm going to select the drop down here. I'll select edit. And this workflow looks a little bit different based on your learning management system. Um, but the key here is to look out for the score gauge when you're editing content. So here um, on the top right, you'll see that I have an accessibility gauge, the standard ally score, um, and it's filled with an orange indicator, right? And it marks or shows that the rating is at 42%. Um, so from there, based on looking at the content and the score, I already know that there are areas that can be improved. So if I hover over it, it says the same score. Let me select it. And from here, everything will look very similar, irrespective of the learning management system that you're in. And so inside of this uh, full screen mode, um, I have access to edit the content. I have my same editor. But on the top and the right, I have allies guidance. So at the very top, you'll notice that it says that I have two text fragments that have insufficient contrast. Um, and then I have the editor denoting each of those occurrences. To the right, I can see that I have an eye icon that lets me show and hide, toggle on and off the highlighting. And then on the right hand side, I have a panel that provides me not only the rating, um, I have access to all the issues. If I select that, I can see all the issues that are currently occurring as a part of this document. And then I have uh, guidance for each of the particular issues. So here, um, this item contains text with insufficient contrast. I can dive in and I can see what this means. So I get a little bit of background on what it is. And I can also see why it's important to have sufficient contrast, right? Going back to the human-centered design part of Ally, this is where it really comes into play, right? We try to make it as easy as possible for people to understand what these issues are and encourage, you know, some positive behavioral changes, right? A little bit of learning as a part of this. So if I look here, um, so as I mentioned, you know, new things here that are really, really important. So the first one here to mention is that Ally is running real time here, right? So it's actively taking a look at the content on the page. So if I do make changes, I'm going to select the text on here. I'm actually going to change it and I'll change the background to be something different. I'll select white in this case. Notice how the accessibility score changes. So I no longer have a contrast issue here, right? I have that dark background with the white text went from a 42 to a 57%. If I revert that, keep an eye on the score, it goes back down to 42%, right? So all of this is happening in real time. I can cycle through each one of the issues. In this case, I only have two issues, so I'm not a lot to cycle through. So live scoring, that is brand new, very cool. What's even more impactful here are the quick fix suggestions that I have here and also the batch remediation. So in this case, I would have to go through each one of these text contrast issues. I would have to update them. I would have to change the colors, multiple steps, right? Here, Ally has suggested a color palette. So I can select, let's select this light gray here. And I'll also select to apply it to all the occurrences. And so here, I take this workflow that might have taken me a few minutes into a couple of seconds. So before I hit apply, again, notice the accessibility score here, 42%. I'll select apply. And it goes up all the way to 73%. And again, part of Ally's guidance here is then immediately taking you to the next items that are most impactful to this uh, particular document in terms of remediation for accessibility. So here I can see that this item also contains an image um, that's missing a description. So I know that if I add that, my score will increase to 98%, right? It's a little bit of incentive to promote to the content creator so they know um, how impactful it can be. Again, I have access to see what this means. 
I can select that. I get a breakdown of what the image description actually is and then why it's impactful. And here, I'll just add a quick image description. Don't judge me on the alt text here. Uh, this is a very complex thing to note. I'll just add it very quickly. So I'll select add, notice the accessibility score. It gets updated all the way to 98%. And then finally, I have one more issue here. There's an item that has empty headings. So when I select that, again, note that it has each occurrence. I might go cycle through it. And here I have a quick fix option to remove all the empty headers or remove this particular empty header, right? So you can do it in batch or you could do it for this singular instance. I'll remove both. So voila, all the way up to 100%. And when I'm ready, I can select close. Then I'm taken back to the editor here, right? The last step to make sure that I do is I have to hit submit. And once I hit submit, that actually saves the changes that allies made, right? We kind of go through this double confirmation process just to make sure that all those changes that you made that you actually want to do it, right? It also plays well with the normal workflows that you have inside of the learning management system. All right, so that is instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content inside of the LMS. This is brand new as of December. And if your institution has not yet enabled it, let me actually show you how to do that. So I'm going to switch over to a different tab. So with a new feature that is this big, it can be a big change, right? For your instructors, for your staff. Uh, so by default, we've chosen to make instructor feedback something that's opt-in, right? To give your institution some time to prepare any documentation train changes, you know, training or change management that you might have. Um, the good news is it's super easy to toggle this on. So let me show you what that's like. So I'll first note that I am inside of the Ally Admin configuration. Um, and how you get here will be a little bit different based on your LMS or VLE. Our help documentation uh, has the steps on how to get to it. But once you're in, it kind of all looks the same. Um, and normally your LMS or VLE administrator has access to this configuration screen. So if you're not seeing it in your account, your admin should be able to assist. So from here, I will select the features tab. And this is the area where I have configura configuration options for a variety of allies tools. So new here is instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content, right? It's the fourth one, two, three, fourth option from the top. I'll select it to expand it. And from here, I can see a screenshot on the left-hand side and then a brief explanation of what it is on the right-hand side. In this particular environment, it's already enabled. But if it wasn't, all you would need to do is select the Enable button, and instructor feedback would be available in your courses. Another important thing to mention, we do have an option to keep your LMS or your VLE's built-in accessibility checker if you have one available. And all you would need to do is select the also enable LMS built-in checker selection box at the very bottom after you've enabled the tool. So if your institution prefers, you know, a consistent ally, a consistent experience with only ally, there's no need to fuss, leave it unchecked. You can also toggle it on and off at your discretion. So that's all you need to do. That is how you get instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content inside of your courses. So that is two of three demo. Uh, let's jump to the third one. So while I'm already in the administration area of Ally, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the institution report trend graph that I mentioned earlier. So if I switch tabs, I've already opened the institution report here. Um, and I'm automatically taken to an overview tab. This is where I can see the refreshed graph here. So starting at the top, you'll notice that I have a couple of new things. So first, I can toggle on and off the overall WYSIWYG and file scores. So if I'm only interested in, let's say, the file score, I can deselect the overall, the WYSIWYG, and all I have is files, right? So if that's my focus, I can easily hone in on that. The other thing to note is that we've changed some of the visual styling here. So you'll notice that we now have um, some different styles for each one of the different pieces of content. So the overall score is a black line now. Uh, the WYSIWYG score is a dashed green line. 
and the file score is now denoted by a smaller dashed blue line. So it just makes it a little bit easier to visually assess, you know, the overall trend, you know, term over term, or in this case, month over month. Uh, we've also decluttered the graph a little bit based on feedback from um, some folks in our community. And this is to better differentiate between the scores to improve readability. So before you would have seen many, many different little icons within each of these. Now they're moved to just the hover over tip here. So these are some small but meaningful changes. Um, and in the future, we're going to be looking to explore some other visualization enhancements like the pie chart below um, based on feedback from the community. All right, so that concludes the demo portion. Let me jump back and let's take a look at what's coming up next for Ally. So just give me a moment to switch back to our deck. Hey, is there a question in chat? Yeah, Dan, it's Krista. Um, there are several people who are really interested in the best way of upgrading from LTI 1.1 to 1.3, such as like best practices, like can you run both concurrently or how do you like, I guess, turn off or disconnect from LTI 1.1 and go to 1.3? There's at least six people asking the question. So if you have time, do you mind just offering a, a quick response? Yeah, most definitely. And thank you for highlighting that, Krista. So first, I would point you to the documentation on the help site, right? We give you kind of a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to do it. Second best way to get information, reach out to our support team. We've done a lot of these conversions already, and we can kind of guide you into, you know, can you have 1.1 and 1.3 available at the same time? Are we going to lose any functionality? The answer is no, you can have both. And when you're ready to have 1.3 available, um, you'll just remove the 1.1 connections. Um, but our support team can help you out and kind of walk you through and guide you. It can sometimes be a little bit daunting, right? Especially with some of these more technically um, um, focused types of upgrades. Um, generally speaking, it's pretty straightforward, right? We've had quite a few institutions do it. Our support team will be your best friend there. So check out uh, our Blackboard support behind the Blackboard, put in a support ticket, you know, very happy to answer any specific questions that you might have. The other thing to stress here is that you don't need to rush to do this. So don't feel that you need to this week figure out, you know, how you migrate to the newer LTI um, integration. Um, this is something that we're, we're going to continue to support your current one. So you don't need to fuss with it, you know, in the middle of a term, you know, figure out when it makes the most sense to make that upgrade, reach out to our support team, develop and craft a plan, and that'll be an easier way to kind of work through it. Um, but generally speaking, it should be a pretty smooth transition there. So even though the IMS is changing their support, we're going to continue to support both versions of the LTI. I hope that helps out everyone. And thank you, Tim and Jonathan, for answering some of the questions in chat and Krista for, for raising it. I hope that helps. All right. Good to hear, Bevan. Yeah. Um, coming up next. All right. Let's talk about some items that are coming up soon. <clears throat> so what I demoed just a moment ago, that's our first iteration of instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. Um, but we also have a lot of improvements that are going to be coming over the next few months. So some of them include, and I know this was mentioned in chat earlier, adding support for Learn Ultra courses. So today we already support Learn Original courses, but we'll be expanding support to Ultra courses in the very near future. Second, we're going to be adding accessibility score gauges when you're viewing content. So today, if you remember in the demo, you had to go in and edit content, and then you get to see the score gauge. You select it, and you get the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. So here, we're going to be moving it out so you can also see it when you're just viewing content, right? making it a little bit more visible, easier to access, um, just like we do today for images. Uh, next, we're also going to be working on better integrating instructor feedback for WYSIWYG into reporting. So when you're viewing the course accessibility report, uh, you'll be able to more quickly access instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. 
And next, we're in the process of also adding additional quick fixes, like links with mis missing text, images with redundant text, and then empty or incorrect heading structure. So that's currently in development. And Vanessa, it is available for Blackboard, Canvas, uh, D12 Brightspace, and Moodle today. Next up, so if your institution's LMS of choice is D2L Brightspace, we've been working with our colleagues at D2L to expand allies' capabilities, in particular the alternative formats, to the new learner experience. So this is the new experience that students have to view content in D2L Brightspace. If your institution has enabled and has started using that, we're going to be expanding allies. So the alternative formats are available um, in that experience. All right, next up, work in progress. So these are a little bit, uh, these are some updates that are a little bit farther down on our road. So in addition to some of the improvements we have already mentioned um, for instructor feedback for WYSIWYG content, we're gonna further extend support to editors in D2L and also in Moodle. So for D2L, we're gonna be expanding to support more tools and content, including web pages or the HTML uh, pages that are available, right? For some institutions, this is the primary way in which you have content available. So we're gonna be expanding there. We've been working with our colleagues at D2L to get allies instructor feedback for WYSIWYG added to those specific pages. And for Moodle, if your institution uses OpenLMS, for example, we're gonna be looking to add support to the Addo editor. Um, for many institutions, that is the default editor that you might have, the rich text editor. Today, we already have support for Tiny MCE. And then next up, and for 2022, this is going to be one of our big initiatives. This is what we call Big Rock. And this is going to be extending allies scoring and guidance to a broader set of multimedia. If you think about Ally today, we do a lot of work around documents. Now we have a good amount of support for content that's created within the LMS, but we also know that multimedia has become you know, a de facto standard for many institutions, especially as you move to completely remote over the pandemic. You know, A lot of that has just been part of course curriculum development now and is a standard. So we're gonna be first starting with video. And this is really something that, so, so we kind of do this today with YouTube videos. We provide some guidance on captions, um, but it's pretty limited. So what we're going to be doing here is going to be expanding it. So if you have content that is stored inside the learning management system, or if it's provided through, you know, our Blackboard Collaborate tool, the software that we're using today, or other third party video or streaming uh, management providers, Ally is going to start to assess those videos for accessibility. So we're going to be broadening it. So it's scanning, reporting, and guidance uh, for video would be included. So this means assessing if a video contains captions or if there is a transcript or whether a piece of video content may have seizure-inducing segments, right? We do this already today for GIFs or GIFs. Um, so all of this will be added to institution and course reports, so you'll get a little bit more of a comprehensive uh, sense of video accessibility in addition to what Ally already provides. And also give you the ability to manually add captions to videos. So we're still working with, uh, still working to define a list of providers, but some of the bigger ones that I see mentioned in chat, those are definitely uh, ones that we're reaching out to and considering adding. Um, so this first batch of video related to work that we're looking to include, um, we're planning over the next few months. This is a pretty big, um, sizable chunk of work. So similar to instructor feedback for WYSIWYG, we'll have multiple kind of phases in development milestones for this. All right. Next up, some longer term highlights to mention. So one area that we have gotten a lot of feedback and interest on is improving or providing better support for STEM content, in particular mathematical equations. Uh, math in particular, you know, it can be a very challenging area uh, for educators to create accessible materials, right? It's, it's, it's a pain point for many, right? In particular, creating alternative formats, right? So um, 
in this case, what we're going to be doing is providing better support for alternative formats, first starting with Microsoft Word and PowerPoint documents. So if you have equations embedded within that, expanding it to WYSIWYG content and also PDFs. So the end result is that Ally will be able to take those source materials and then manipulate them to then create alternative formats similar to what we do today, um, just with any other document or piece of content that you have. This one's a little bit on our longer term roadmap. There's a lot of research, a lot of technical complexity associated with this one. So we're going to be working with our team very diligently, reaching out to the community for feedback progressively as we kind of work through this particular couple other items to mention here. Yeah, Kathy, absolutely. Um, expanding our set of WCAG 2.1 checks. So WCAG 2.1 AA is, is the uh, guidance or standard um, that Ally uses, right? This is kind of our checklist of items that we go through to provide accessibility scoring and reporting. So here we're looking to grow our checklist uh, with a particular focus on mobile. So that includes items like orientation, which denotes if your device is in a landscape or portrait mode, that's like when you rotate your phone or your tablet and it changes. Um, but also the reflowing of content. When you think about reflowing of content, a lot of times um, you'll say, you know, responsive design. So it just means like, is that content actually moving to fit the form factor of the device that you're actually using? As well as things like text spacing. So this includes, um, you know, line height, paragraph spacing, letter and word space. So that is also in our longer term. Oh, yep. Yeah. So Sharon, you're asking, are you saying written with Microsoft Math Word Editor or add-ins for math type or other? We're still working through on the particular details there. So they're, they're, it can come in a lot of different flavors, right? You have many different ways in which you can create um, mathematical equations, be it an editor or a built-in tool inside of Microsoft Word. In some cases, it's just an image that's been scanned. We're kind of looking at the complexity of each one of those. Um, but the ideal state is that from these various input types, Ally would be able to create the alternative formats. So we don't, we're not 100% sure yet on the particular ones that we'll have for this first iteration, but all of those that you mentioned would be under consideration. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, John. All right, a few additional items to mention on our roadmap that we're planning for. So it's enhancing our CSV exports to include more details and some data points, departmental scores, for example, um, improving and in some cases better automating or suggesting quick fixes, excuse me, for things like PDFs that might not have a title or a set language. You kind of got a flavor of that during the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG demo. We're also in the process of improving the way that the alternative or alt text is managed and stored as it's applied to images and different LMS tools. Today, we have some limitations with some of the LMSs that create, you know, kind of an unideal workflow, um, especially when you're copying and rolling uh, over courses. So this is a project that's already kicked off that we're working on. And specific to Ally for Web, we're going to be looking to introduce domain scoring. So you'll be able to see the evolution or trend of the accessibility score across an entire website and the subdomain. Also working on additional guidance flows. And for Ally for WCM, uh, introducing rescan on demand. So your institution has a little bit more control uh, when content scanning occurs for you know, specific subsites. So you can see reports updated in a little bit more of a timely fashion. And the, the idea here is that we're first going to be starting off by offering the ability to rescan broken links in WCM in content feedback and institutional reports. And we're also looking at improving just district level reports. All right, so I know there have been a bunch of questions in chat. I wanted to make sure that we had uh, quite a bit of time to answer Q&A. So let's spend some time answering some of the questions that everyone had on the roadmap. So Rose, Jonathan, um, anything specific that stuck out um, that we would like to cover? Or Krista, yeah. Yeah, I think this question was overlooked in the chat. This is from um, Rachel Shuttlesworth Thompson. Is there a character or word count limit on the alt text? 
Ooh, that's a good question. I would assume, so whenever you think about any input inside of a system uh, like Ally, um, there is going to be a, you know, set, you know, kind of end cap as to how much data can actually be set or stored within a system, right? So that's kind of part of it. There is also kind of the question of best practice and like how much you should have, um, how descriptive you should be. Sorry about the dog barking. Um, so there are some of those um, in place today. I don't know the specifics. We can get back to you on that one. But yes, there, there is some limitation there. And Rachel, I, I can see you're just thinking of a bioprof writing a description of the cell diagram. I know. I, I chose that particular one, um, for example, because it could be very, very difficult to get all the information added as all text. So there might be different ways of kind of providing that information also if you feel limited by some of those. Cool, good question. Other questions, T, that we wanna highlight or ask? Dan, I think we have covered all the questions on the chat. Thanks to Krista, uh, Jonathan, team, and all the team. <laughs> so. I think we can move to the next slide. Fantastic. I also saw one last question about end of life and the ally B2. So no plans to end of life the B2. The B2 provides a little bit different functionality um, than the LTI tool. Um, so that deals specifically with getting information uh, from Blackboard's learning management system into Ally to make sure that we have updates from courses, files, you know, terms, all of that information. So that will be in place. I know there are plans to end of life some of the building blocks that um, that are currently out there, uh, allies will remain uh, for the foreseeable future. Big question. Yeah, no problem. So I think with that, I think I'm turning it back over to you, Rose, to wrap up with some announcements. I'll stick on for chat. If there are questions, feel free to put them on there. Happy to respond, but I'll turn it over to you, Rose. Thanks, everyone. Okay, Dan, thank you. Great presentation you had for us today, right? Thank you, thank you very much. And a few uh, quick items to mention and announcements to make, uh, especially related to up upcoming events. Well, coming up this year, we have our Anthology Together event. If you have been to BB World before, this is the new institutional uh, client event where we're getting together everyone from higher education, K-12 in the US, across the globe, together in Orlando, Florida this year. So AT2022 is being held at Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort, as you can see on this slide. Uh, one of the things that we are doing this year, and we actually did something very similar last year, was having a dedicated accessibility and inclusive access track. And as part of that, uh, we're looking for people to present. So if you are interested in presenting, uh, tell your story, uh, give insights, or, have, uh, or, or you have uh, some accessibility topic, that you would like to share, for example, how your institution is adopting a lie, rather uh, accessibility and inclusive practices. Uh, these uh, su submissions are open. Call, call for proposals is open. So we invite the speakers to share their knowledge, uh, best practices, lessons learned, and tips and tricks with all uh, colleagues. Um, I'll put a link on the chat for everyone as well to know more about um, Anthology Together 2022. Okay. And um, also Fix Your Content Day is back. This year we'll be holding another Fix Your Content Day on the Global Accessibility Awareness Day, uh, which is going to be held on May uh, 19th. Let's remember that the purpose of the Global Accessibility Awareness Day is to get everyone talking, thinking, and learning about uh, digital access and inclusion. And the Fix Your Content Day is a 24-hour drive 
committed to creating accessible and more inclusive digital learning content across um, classrooms and institutions globally. And our on Fix Your Content Day, we aim to fix as many course files as possible through Blackboard Alive. So you will be receiving more information about this event uh, in the next weeks. And we are uh, looking forward to your participation and at this event. Okay, and last thing I wanted to mention was related to the release announcement of the instructor feedback for WYSIWYG. Uh, well, Dan gave us a great demo about the WYSIWYG uh, feedback today, but we also created a brief three-minute walkthrough uh, video that you can access by going to the link that I'm putting on the chat right here. Right. You can uh, socialize this video at your institution, and if you haven't enabled the WYSIWYG uh, feedback yet, this is a good preparation for it, so uh, check it out. It is also on YouTube, and it's captioned too. And we also have a new blog post uh, with the main benefits of the WYSIWYG uh, feedback and how it has helped instructors and institutions to go from reactive to proactive content creation. So with that, um, I think we will wrap up this session. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and for your participations, participation. Recordings will be emailed to registrants and also posted on the community side. And please don't hesitate to reach out to the Ally team for any questions, any doubts. We will be more than happy to help. Um, so hope you have a great day. Bye. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Always appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed uh, the roadmap uh, webinar. I'll stick around for a couple more minutes if you have any more questions. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Blackboard team, for answering everyone's questions. Hope everyone has a good day. I hope it's nice and sunny where you are because it is cold and wet here in Austin, Texas. So have a great day, everyone. Go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, does someone have a link to those events that were listed on one of the slides? Can, uh, if somebody could just paste those in chat, um, Tisha is asking for those. Sure, let me put the links again in the chat. And Christopher, no um, specific timelines to share yet for some of those items on the last slide. Um, I think you're particularly interested in the alt text image updates that we have coming. So that, that is an active development. As we kind of progress through it, we'll have some more um, information on availability um, there. And the CSV improvement. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Tisha. Really, really happy that you could join today. Hope you found it beneficial. And Rose, it looks like there was a question on the recording. Um, I assume that'll just be available later this week or early next week. Yeah, then it will be sent in, in the next couple of days. OK, perfect. So be on the lookout there um, for that recording. It'll also be posted on our community site. Yeah, you're very welcome, Craig. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.